As the saying goes, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And often the biggest mistake that people make when they set goals is they don't create a plan of how they're going to achieve those goals. This is my four step process for how I turn my 12 week goals into a 12 week plan. The first thing I will do is brainstorm a big list of all of the tasks and projects and habits that I need to implement in order to fulfill this goal. For example, my goal of finishing my research responsibilities strong or letting go of those research responsibilities is kind of vague and I need to establish what does done actually mean for this role. The first thing that I'll need to do is arrange a meeting with my supervisor. During that meeting then I'll hope that we will establish what the final project that we're going to work on will look like. I'll also be attending two different conferences so those will be seen as projects and I'll also have a set of actions related to those projects for example, one of them is coming up in a couple of weeks and I've already arranged all of the travel for that conference. The remaining actions that I have will be to make my poster for the conference, practice my poster presentation that I'm going to give, and also then to compile all the invoices and claim any expenses for the trip. And that will have wrapped up that particular conference. The other conference takes place at the end of this 12 week year period. And for that particular conference, I've already again finished up all of the final proofs of papers and everything like that. But I do have a full presentation that I'll need to offer for this event. I'll need to prepare the presentation slides for that presentation as well as practice it. I'll also need to organize the travel for this conference. So I'll need to book flights. I'll need to book accommodation. I have already booked the attendance for the conference, but I need to yeah make my travel arrangements. I'll also then need to claim those as part of the reimbursement process for that particular conference as well. Then as I mentioned there will be a final project that we need to work on. I'm not entirely sure what that will involve yet but I do imagine this will be a data analysis project and that it will be leading towards a final journal paper that describes the data set that we've worked on and does some analysis of the remaining data. As part of finishing up this research responsibility, there's also an aspect of handing over my work. One part of that is doing a final kind of culmination presentation of my research, which will happen in January. I don't know whether I will actually get the preparation for that done during this period or if I'll consider this the last couple of weeks since my contract technically ends in January. Then also handing over the code and the data and writing up some document about all of the code and the data so that if somebody were to take over this project from me, they would have everything that they need and they wouldn't need to contact me trying to figure out where everything is. The next thing that I will do is figure out the calendar of the next 12 weeks, meaning when do these different tasks and projects need to take place. Some of these will be easier to calendar than others. There's usually at the beginning of the 12 week year a bit of a set up project that kind of happens or some set up tasks which typically will take place in the first week. For example, this week I'll be meeting my supervisor. I want to make sure that I know what the final piece of work that we need to complete is. Otherwise that's going to delay me from actually making good progress towards the rest of this work. There are also going to be certain projects that just have naturally got assigned due dates. For example, I know that week three of this 12 week year cycle, I'm going to be at a conference as well as in week 12. I also am on holidays on week five of this particular 12 week year cycle, which you're kind of not meant to go on holidays during the 12 week, but we're just gonna ignore that. Because I'll have some preparation work for the two conferences that I need to attend, I'm going to add in a preparation week for the week before the final conference as well as the week before the more recent conference. That will then leave time for around two weeks of work on the project that we will hopefully decide on this week, followed by a five week work period on that particular project. So the way this typically works with these projects is I'll do some initial kind of data analysis and get some results going. I'll then typically send these to my supervisor, get some feedback. There's usually a second round of data analysis that needs to take place, followed by a two or three week write up and publication period. So that's my expectation going into this. 
I do think the project can be completed in between six to eight weeks. So I think that is achievable with everything else that I need to do as part of my research work. The next thing that I will do is figure out when this work is going to take place in terms of my weekly schedule. It's important to take a look at your weekly schedule and figure out where you're going to fit in the different habits and the amount of work that you actually need to do for each goal. For some goals, you're going to have more like quick tick habits or habits that can be added on to, for example, your morning routine. If you're trying to get in 30 minutes of daily exercise, that's something that could be easily added on to your existing morning routine, but it might mean having to wake up 30 minutes earlier, meaning getting into bed 30 minutes earlier too. Other goals are going to require more time. For example, with my goal of auditioning for drama schools, I'll need to fit in around three rehearsals a week of around 60 minutes. And I do have time that I can fit that into my schedule on Monday evenings, Tuesday evenings, and Thursday evenings. For this particular goal of my research work, I know that I'm going to need between two to three, three to four hour blocks a week to get this kind of research work done. I'll need to go through my schedule and figure out where I can fit those larger blocks of time that I'll be able to fit in that kind of research work. My previous several weeks, I've been spending Tuesdays and Fridays working on research, and I believe that is what I will continue doing. And that gives me two, three or four hour blocks on each of those days. I do think I need to probably squeeze in one more, maybe two hour block where it's more kind of cleaning up some of the work that's been done and kind of synthesizing what needs to be done for that given week. I'm going to see how that goes at first and I'll see if I potentially need to add in another kind of 90 minute block. I think if I were to do that, the time that it would probably have to happen would be on Mondays. The other habit that I would like to implement as part of this research work would be to provide my supervisor with an update email every Friday afternoon because that's when I'll have finished my research work for the week. This habit is easy to add on to the end of my research block because it's something that I'm already doing. I'd also like to meet my supervisor every maybe one to two weeks and it makes most sense to do that on Tuesdays, which is my other research day. This will depend on his schedule. It's also something that we'll then need to discuss in the meeting that we have in this first week. The final thing that I'll do as part of my 12 week plan will be to figure out my scoring metrics for this particular goal. As part of the 12 week year, there is a real heavy emphasis on the weekly evaluation so that you can determine how well you're actually working towards your goals. This involves scoring your week and determining scoring metrics that you're going to use to evaluate your progress. For this particular goal, there will be certain things that just need to happen. So there'll be projects that need to get completed and I will mark my week based on whether I have achieved that project or achieved those tasks on that given week. For example, if I have four tasks planned on a given week and I achieve three of those tasks, then I'll get a score of 75% for those tasks. The other aspect of scoring with this particular goal will be to work out how much time I'm actually putting into this goal. So I'm going to be rigorously tracking how many hours of research work I'm doing each week out of how many research hours I planned to do. If I'm finding that I'm not getting what I need to get done in terms of the tasks that I've laid out in the time that I've set, then I'll be able to evaluate at the end of each week whether it's possible to add on more research time to try and get what I need to get done done. I'll also be scoring myself on whether or not I send that update, update email to my supervisor. Sometimes these habits are difficult for me to stick to, so it's one that I really want to track because I do think this will help me to be more effective in getting this work done. I'm also going to keep track of how many coding notebooks I have cleaned up and how much of a progress I've made. So I'm going to make like a progress bar for how far along I am in terms of cleaning up all of my code which is kind of a continuous process that I will be working on for the 12 weeks. For this goal, there isn't really an output necessarily because it is something that I just want to finish. I think it'll be really coming to the end of these 12 weeks and just being satisfied with whether or not I have completed my goal. I think potentially one of the output metrics will be code for handing over, like how, how much of those notebooks are ready to be handed over, I suppose. 
also whether or not we actually do get a final paper completed. That is it for this video. I hope that it was helpful. Sometimes I find that you can learn all about a goal setting process, but without the plan, it's quite difficult to make progress. And I hope that seeing my process for how I turn my 12 week goals into a 12 week plan was useful for you to be able to do the same. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It means a lot to me and I'll see you all in the next video.